So let me give you some notable Philistine encounters. Notable Philistine encounters. The giant that David killed. Now everybody knows that story. I don't care if you go to church or not. You know the story about David and Goliath. The giant that David killed was a Philistine. So he was a Philistine. Samson's battles. Every one of Samson's battles were against Philistines. You remember Samson had a wedding party and it lasted all week and, and he ended up you know, getting tricked with the whole uh, lion carcass and the honey and all that stuff and, and they were drinking. They, were, they made beer so they were drinking. They were having a good time. So Samson's battles were all against the Philistines, killing thousands of Philistines, you know, all this stuff. Uh, carried off the gates. Uh, I think it was Ekron, tore the gates off and, and carried, it, carried it back home, so to speak. See, it was the Philistines that stole the Ark of the Covenant in battle. The Ark of the Covenant, Covenant was taken into battle by two men that should have never, that had no right to take it into battle. They, it, it, it was, a, it was a, a time when God wasn't speaking to anybody. It was a time when, when God had turned his, his attention away because they, they were not doing, they were not living right. They were not being obedient to the Lord. They carried the Ark of the, uh, of the Lord into battle. All of them got killed just about and, and, and the Philistines took that, stole that ark and they took it. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. So another, Jonathan's son, uh, Jonathan, the, the king's son, King Saul's son, he climbed the cliff, went up and killed 20 Philistines by himself with nothing but him and his armor bearer. So he would kill one and his armor bearer would stab him with a sword and, and he killed all those. Those were Philistines. So that was what was going on. So David even had to hide. We talked about this a little bit last week. David even had to hide behind enemy lines with the Philistines in order to escape Saul. So, David was not friends with the Philistines. He was not an ally with the Philistines. He was, they were enemies. So let's get that straight. So, let's look at the Philistine spirit. Let's look at how it works. Give you a little bit of background there. See how, look at and see how it works. And what do we do about it? So let's look in... in, in Pretty much the entire chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 5. We're just going to skip one verse is all. So uh, 1 Samuel chapter 5. When the Philistines captured the ark, remember they went into battle. Two dudes, the sons of Samuel, uh, or Eli, Hophni and Phinehas are their names. They, oh, let's just carry the ark of the Lord into battle and it'll give us victory. So, you know, just huddle shouts. So when the Philistines captured the ark, big time bad thing, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. That's important. We're going to look at it. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and they brought it into the house of Dagon. <laughs> Dagon. And set it up beside Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, behold, I'm assuming they're paying some kind of homage to their God. Behold, Dagon had fallen face down. <laughs> I love it. It's probably where we get it. Dagon. And... I mean, you know, what do you say? You know, I, I, I love, this is one of my favorite, just, I love this. Dagon, our God fell. I mean, I, 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 I mean, you know, if your God falls down, you might want to find another God. That's just all I'm saying. Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they, so they took Dagon. <laughs> And they picked him back up. So, hey, y'all, come here. Hey, Bob, grab Ed and, and, and get that kid over there. And, Bob, you come on. Hey, pick our God up. I mean, I, what? What? I mean, you pick our God up. He fall down, you know. <laughs> so when they rose early on the next morning, that ought to do it. You know what we would do? I tell you what, J.D. and I have done this a hundred times. Give me some of them three-inch screws. <laughs> I'll make that dude, he ain't falling no more, you know. I'll put some straps around him, pop him to the wall. He's not, our God's not falling down again. But when they rose early on the next morning, behold, Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord. And this time it went a little farther. And the head of Dagon had, and both his hands were lying cut off on the threshold. Only the trunk of Dagon was left. So... What do you do? I mean, you know, you, you, your God's just been kind of jacked up. So let's just, dag on. So let's just jump. We're going to skip. It, it talks about the threshold. We're just going to skip to verse 5, and we're going to read the rest of it. So this is what happens. Then the hand of the Lord was heavy against the people of Ashdod, the Philistines. And he terrified and afflicted them with tumors, both Ashdod and its territory. 
And when the men of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, The ark of God of Israel, the presence of God, must not remain with us, for his hand is hard against us and hard against Dagon our God. So they sent, I love this part, what are we going to do? So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines. What do we do? We need to figure this out. We can't have our God falling down and breaking every time we turn around. What, what shall we do to the ark of God of Israel? So they answered, I know what we'll do. Let's get it out of here and send it to Gath. Let them deal with it. So, I mean, that, I mean, it's like, look, we don't want you here. We don't want the presence of God here. So get that thing out of here and send it to our brothers over in Gath. Let them deal with it. So they sent and get, uh, or so, but after they had brought it around, the hand of the Lord was against that city, causing a very great panic, and he afflicted the men of, of the city, both young and old, so that tumors broke out on them. So, we keep reading. Verse 11. So, then, uh, so they sent, therefore, and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of God and let it return to its own place. May it not kill us and our people. For, for there, was, there, was a dead, uh, there was a death and panic throughout the whole city. And the hand of God was very heavy on them. And I love verse 12. So the men who, who died... Uh, who did not die, were struck with tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. And I, I skipped a verse. I, I'm sorry, I skipped a verse. So it, they, they said, let's just send it to Gath. So from Ashdod, let's send it to Gath. Let them deal with it. So what Gath does is Gath turns around and says, hey, we're going to send it to another place. We're going to send it somewhere else. We don't want it here anymore. So here's the thing. This gives us a good look. So we're going to kind of break this down. It gives us a good look at the heart of the Philistine spirit and how it operates. So, number one, we're going to look at how it operates. How this spirit operates. This spirit's the same spirit operating in our lives today. You know what? And, and, and the spirit has no answer for when things don't go its way. It just wants to manipulate the whole time. See, they didn't have an answer for, 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 for why their God was broken all up in the presence of the Lord. So they carried the ark. Here's the number one thing I want you to look at. They carried the ark in verse 1 from a place called Ebenezer to a place called Ashdod. Remember, Ashdod was one of the cities the Philistines lived in. And they carried that from, from the battle uh, at Ebenezer. Here's what those words mean. Ashdod means theft. That's what the word means. It means theft. Ebenezer means stone of help. So... Let's look at how the Spirit's going to work in our lives if we give it a chance. The Spirit wants to separate you from God and steal the heart to serve God. The, the, the Spirit wants to steal the heart to serve God, focus on anything else, remove you from a place of help to a place where, 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 where your, 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 your children, your soul, and everything else can be, can, be, can be stolen away. So it's a place of theft. So that, that, that spirit wants to remove us from what can help us, which is God, and take us to a place where there is no help. The spirit wants to take us from a place of conviction. See, when we're, when, we, when we're in the presence of the Lord, we're in the presence of his conviction, his convicting spirit. He wants us to take us from a place of conviction to a place of comfort. See, I, I just want to be comfortable. I don't want to, I don't want, you know, it's like, I mean, we've even had people come to this church Stand and tears roll down their eyes. And they didn't like the conviction that God was placing on them. All God was saying was, you know what? In the presence of the Holy Spirit, you got to realize that you need salvation. You need a, a relationship with the Lord. That's what conviction does. So, so the Spirit wants to take us from a place of conviction to a place of comfort. See, when we become comfortable in our sin then the conviction to seek Jesus will be greatly diminished. The Philistine spirit wants to move you from a place where God is in control to a place where we are in control. That just, I mean, that's all this. The, the spirit just, just wants to move us from a place to where God can be in control to a place where we want control. So, number two. Number two, how the spirit works. Dagon was a large image. It was a large image, you know, if they're going to build a God, build it big, right? So they built this big thing. So Dagon was a large image. Goliath was a large giant. 
which was a Philistine. Goliath's family were a race of giants. Goliath was from Gath, which is one of the cities that, 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 that was occupied by the Philistines. The remnant of the giants later on fled to three cities, Ashdod, uh, Gaza, and Gath, to escape the Israelite wrath of God. That's recorded in Joshua chapter 11, I think verse 22. So, the Philistine spirit always looks large. The Philistine spirit is always going to make sure that the situation is too big. It's, oh, it's, it's the biggest thing we've ever faced. See, the battle will always appear large. See, the Philistine spirit wants you to, to see your problem as being too big, I've said it before, and our God as being too small. See, we, the Philistine spirit always wants to make sure that, well, I, I, just, I just don't want to do. I don't know what to do. My children, I, you know, I, you know I, can't get, I, I can't get them to focus on the Lord. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I don't know how I'm going to pay this. I don't know what. You know what? The Philistine spirit always wants to make sure that thing is giant and it cannot be moved. See, the largest attack in your life right now, straight up, is a Philistine spirit. The largest attack in your life is a Philistine spirit. So, number three way we can kind of, kind of, decipher and kind of dissect this spirit and how he works is verse 1 again. This Philistine spirit wants to use the presence of God for personal gain. See, the Philistine spirit just wants to use God when it's convenient. You know what? I'll give you an example. Let's just say you're going for a job interview. And, and you know what? And job interview, you know, number one is you're, 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 in, the, you're in the interview and, and the guy starts talking, you know, the, the boss or whoever's hired starts talking about his faith in the Lord. Well, all of a sudden you're conveniently uh, a strong Christian. You praise the Lord, brother. But then you go to, you know, you, then you go to, 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 to interview number two and this guy's living like the devil. Yeah, I drink me some every now and then. You know what? I, you know what? It's like... The Philistine spirit wants to use the presence of God for personal gain as a trophy. They took the presence of God as a trophy. Look what we have. Look what we have. We have the God of the Israelites. We have the God of the Israelites. They don't even know what they had. See, as a trophy, when it's convenient and when it makes me feel good or look good. See, we have so many in this world today. They're, you know, they're, it's like you know, they're only Christians... And I'm not trying to be ugly, but we're only Christians when it's convenient for us in the, in the world today. See, they placed the ark in the temple with the fake God Dagon. They, it's like, look, we're going to treat him like every other God. We're just going to stick him in there, slide him in the corner. That's our God. How many of us want God in a box and slide him in the corner? I have been there. So you're not by yourself. I've been there. I, I, I wanted to mix and mold and match and however I wanted God to be. I want God to look like this in my life. But God says, look, you're going to look like I want you to look in my life or we're not going to do this. So, so uh, well, you're, not, you, you're going to be very frustrated. So, see, they respected the ark, but they disrespected God. So number four, this is how we identify the spirit. The Philistine spirit categorizes God. God cannot be categorized. God is God, and He, I mean, we don't categorize God. When we begin to categorize God, then we begin to, 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 to lessen Him, to, to, to uh, equalize Him. They began to categorize God as just another God. See, this is what the Philistine spirit does. You know, it's just another God. It's just categorize Him in, a, in, in, the same, in the same general facility. We're going to stick Him in the same room with the other gods. And He's just one of those gods stuck in that room. You know what? Not only... Not only does the Philistine spirit want to categorize God and make us think God's just another God, but also this Philistine spirit wants us to think that uh, it, it teaches that, you know, Jesus is not the only way to heaven. There's multiple ways to heaven. You can get to heaven through this God, serving that religion. You know what? I'm going to break your heart if you feel this way. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. You know what? I'm just going to tell you right now, I believe John chapter 14. And you know what? I don't care whatever God serves or is being served. I don't care what popular people on TV say, well, there's more than one way to heaven. There's not. There is not. So the Spirit wants us to believe this. And as you continue to teach generation after generation, then they become numb to it, and they begin to start thinking more tolerant. Oh, yeah, okay, well, there probably is. 
If I, you know, hey, if I was the enemy and I wanted to attack you, I'd attack you slowly and, 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 start, and start whittling away at your mentality and your theology. And the next thing you know, everything is acceptable. See, that Philistine spirit categorizes God as just one of the boys. Just one of the boys. Say so they put the presence of the living God. David refers to God as the living God. They put the presence of the living God in the same room with an image. God, God's jealous. He's not going to be shared. So, and you say, well, that's, I don't want to serve a jealous God. You know, I want to defend that for a second. This is total, I'm going, I'm going totally digressing here. But I don't want to serve a God that's jealous. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you an example. You have a marriage. You have a husband. You have a wife. Do you feel like sharing them with other people? You know what? I, you know what? I, I can honestly tell you, I'm a jealous husband. I, 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 I don't want to wake up in the morning and, 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 and tap Rob on, on the back and say, hey, it's good to see you. You know, now move. You know, I, I, I'm not going to do that because that's not who we are. It's not what God called us to do. So you know what? Here's the thing. The Philistine spirit, number five, how we can identify the Philistine spirit. The Philistine spirit says, if I can't control God, then I've got to get rid of God. See, that's what they did. They couldn't control God. God kept breaking their God. And then they just wanted to get rid of God. So in other words, we liked God, the, the living God, the God of Israel, when we thought He was a trophy. But when He's going to break down our world, then we don't want Him anymore. So the Philistine spirit says if we can't control God, we get rid of God. So the Philistine spirit pushes God away. How many of us have seen and been around and done it ourselves? We've pushed God away because we just wanted. We, I, I, don't want, I, don't want, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want the Lord. I don't want to serve the Lord. See, we push God away when we don't get what we want. We push God away when we don't get what we want. If God doesn't fit my time frame, well, and I even had somebody tell me this. I've been praying for a week. God gave me a, God gave me a job and I ain't got a job. So I'm giving up on him. Well, you didn't put much into it. I mean, I'm, I just had to tell the person, I'm like, look, I'm sorry, grow up. You know what? You, know, you may not get a job. It, it takes longer these days. So the thing is, is if, we don't, if God doesn't fit in our time frame, our lifestyle, our wants and our desires, then we just don't need Him anymore. We'll push Him out. They just pushed Him away. The Philistines pushed Him away. The Philistines sent the Ark of God from Ashdod to Gath, from Gath, to Ekron, trying to get rid of him. You know what? This is not working for us. We can't control this God. We can control the one we have to glue back together with super glue, but we can't control God, the living God. So how do we identify this Philistine spirit? Number six, the Philistine spirit thinks of God as something equal. The key word is something. Something equal. Something man-made. Something, a thing to be carried about when we need. See, you know, uh, 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 you know we, we carry about our relationship with the Lord, but we discard that relationship when it's not convenient anymore. We carry that presence when we need, it on, when, when we need Him only. So the seventh way to identify is in verse 11. The Philistine spirit says, Fear of what God might do, is greater than the expectation of what he will do. The, the, the Philistine spirit says this. Fear of what God might do. I'm afraid of what God might do. So therefore, I'm not even going to allow him to do. So I, I don't have any expectations of what he might do. Or what, what, what he will do. I just am scared to death of what he, what he could do. So they were so afraid of God that they pushed him away. Rather than change and serve him. We, you know, we could change and serve the Lord, but instead we push Him away. You know what? I, I'm not doing that. I'm going to push Him away. So we push Him away. See, many today would rather live without Him in fear. And I'm, not, I'm talking about the world. I see why well, I, have, I have TV. I have, I have national news. I, I listen to the radio. I listen, you know, I listen to talk radio way too much. Um, many today would rather live without Him in fear than to serve Him in victory. I would rather live without him in fear than to serve him in victory. 
But see, we have to go back to one of those aspects of God being in control. When I'm in control, it don't work so well. The Philistines, this is what they did. They drank, they partied, they fought, and they womanized. They drank, they partied, they fought, and they womanized. You know, I'm just going to tell you, that looks a lot like the, nature, the sinful nature of man. I'm going to tell you, it looks a lot like my lifestyle a long time ago. That's a lot like my lifestyle. You know what? I, there's nothing in that lifestyle that, 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 that I'm proud of. There's nothing in that lifestyle that I want to, 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 to pass on to somebody else. And there's nothing in that lifestyle that, that reproduces life in anybody else. They wanted to party. They wanted to drink. They wanted to, to uh, womanize. And they wanted to fight. See, here's the thing. There's one simple solution to binding and defeating and having victory over this Philistine spirit. And it's located numerous places, but we're going to key in on one. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 36. This is David going back to the Philistine attack. The giant screaming at him from, screaming at him from the valley. David walks up and says, oh, uh-uh, it ain't happening. And he says, your servant, David... Your servant of the living God has struck down both lions. I've killed bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine. See, when they said uncircumcised, what that, what that would equate to today is someone who's a non-believer. Someone who is against God. And this is what you're saying to me. You, I mean, this is what you, you're saying this guy is shouting obscenities to our God and you're doing nothing about it? I'm a kid. He was 16 years old somewhere in that neighborhood. He's a kid. And he says, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God, and it ain't happening on my watch. It's not happening on my watch. So David said, this is how you deal with the Philistine spirit. How, and, and I just want, I don't want you to picture with me. It's a, it's a, a ravine where the, where the giant came down. It's a, a plateau, and all this army is up here. Goes down in the ravine, here's the giant coming down shouting, send somebody to fight me. Then it goes back up and here's another plateau where all the Philistines were. And this is the way I see it. David's like, what's wrong with every one of you guys? What's wrong with all all, all y'all? I just go show you David Southern. What's wrong with all y'all? You let him say this and you do nothing about it? I'd rather die than to hear this. So David, David says, look... You, you see a giant. That's all you see. It's the Philistine spirit. All you see is a giant. What I see, I see somebody standing in the way. What I see is a giant that just haven't, hasn't fallen yet. I see a dead man that don't even know he's dead. So you see something that you, you see something and fear strikes into you. Get out of my way. I'm going to deal with it. See, David says, your giant problem, fear not. I'll take care of it. See, I'll take care of it because God through me is greater than that dude in that valley. So here, that giant's not so big. Once you look at him through the eyes of God, we'll show you what David says in verse 48, or what he does. When the Philistine arose, when this giant rose, and he came and drew near to meet David, (laughs) David ran. And he ran quickly. And he ran toward the battle. And he ran toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. See, here's how we deal with the Philistine spirit in our lives. It's always going to be big. It's always going to be a giant. And here's how we deal with it. David ran after his giant. That's what he did. He ran to his giant. You know what? He had a handful of faith. That's about all he had with him. Some spirits only fall when we run, not from them, but to defeat them. Some, some are only going to fall when we run toward the victory. Philistine spirits, they want to defeat you. That, 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 I mean, that's, you know, like I said, they don't have a lot of agenda just to party and, 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 and drink and, 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 and womanize and fight. See, this Philistine spirit wants to defeat you. Here's the thing. Choose which way you're going to run because I promise you, you're going to run one way or the other. We're either going to run away from him or we're going to run straight toward it. We can run away, but see, don't make him go away. Jo- Johnny Hood says that all the time. Any problem that goes away by itself will come back by itself. So if we run away, you know what? We're running away from the fight. We're just going to have to face it later on. We may lose a lot of people in the process. Choose which way you're going to run. Because this is what God says. I want you to run straight toward the enemy. I'm going to give you a handful of faith. That's all David had. A few stones. 
little old sling thing. That's all he had. See, you will never have your victory. Never, you will never have your victory as long as the Philistine spirit is in control. Hey, guys, you were doing this, and you stopped on us, and you watched us, and I appreciate it. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for spending some time with us. I, I pray that you enjoyed the service today. Let me take this opportunity to invite you out personally. Uh, we're located on the square in Sparta. Our service times are at 9 and 11 every Sunday morning. We'll meet you at the door with a hug. We'll meet you at the door with some coffee ready and some donuts if you want. And uh, let me just take a real quick minute to invite you over to our Smithville campus. For those of you who can't drive over to Sparta, drive over to Smithville. 11 o'clock for now at 614 Murphy Street in Smithville, Tennessee. So one of our campuses, Christ Point Church, we're real people, we're living real lives, and we're serving a real God. Welcome home. <laughs>